Hi, this is Jim Gibson from CableSupply.com. Thank you for watching my video today. Uh, I decided that I needed a part two of this video because basically uh, a lot of people had a lot of questions and it would be easier just to explain on video rather than write paragraph after paragraph of explanation. So this is how to get a cabling job uh, when without experience, part two. So first of all, I want to tell you that if you're sending me comments, thank you. Even if you disagree with me, that's absolutely fine with me. I don't take it personally, and you might have a good point that I've never considered before. I may have misspoke, or maybe you have uh, misunderstood. But I like negative, I like the positive, everything else. So don't hold back. Uh, send as many comments as you possibly can. I read every single comment, uh, but I decided that doing the video would probably give a better explanation than paragraphs worth of explanations. So the first thing I want to say is, uh, a lot. Some people were concerned that this was a lifetime job for $15 an hour and they could not support a business. Well, you're, I'm not asking you or recommending that you start a business for $15 an hour. What I'm saying is this is how you get your foot in the door. Uh, this is how you learn cabling. Um, you know, and, and you're, you're going to, you got to pick a low amount. Now, I don't care if you charge $15 or $50. It's whatever the market uh, you, you think someone's going to hire you for. That would be fine with me, you know. More power to you, man. If you can make more money, great. The $15 an hour was a suggestion for a 1099 employee. Now, a 1099 employee um, is an IRS term, I believe, and that means that you pay your own taxes. So if you haven't seen the last video, go back and watch the last video because some of these comments will make more sense if you've seen uh, part one. So anyway, make a long story short, it, this is not meant to be a lifetime job. I'm not talking about living wage. I have nothing to do with politics. This, has, this channel does not talk about politics. It has nothing to do with politics. I am not discussing that or anything else. I just made that as a suggestion, as a starting point. So you pick whatever you want. Now, the key way to figure out if you uh, pick the right amount is if people actually hire uh, you to do the work. If they're hiring you to do the work, then you probably, uh, you know, pick the right amount and you can raise the rates later after you've learned and after you get some experience and after people in the industry, a couple of these companies find out who you are and they uh, decide to, uh, you know, hire you on a regular basis, you know, or once a month, once every other week, once a week, I don't know. It's, it's pretty much up to them and you. So you'll have to decide what to charge. But I'm just saying, if you charge too much, People won't offer you the position that you need so you can learn this type of uh, a skill. And, uh, you know, there's two types of people out there, too. There's people who are mechanically inclined, and I find they're basically the best cablers. And there's others that aren't mechanically inclined, and they might be software inclined. They might be great Microsoft uh, uh, engineers and things like that. And uh, so... You know, people have different abilities and everything else. So if you really feel comfortable with cabling after you've done it for a while, you know, well, maybe you might want to start a company. And maybe this whole theme of just helping other companies with, uh, you know, uh, trained help uh, might be something you get into. There's a lot of possibilities. But if you want to get the experience, that was a suggestion. It's just one of many ways to get your foot in the door because people have often... Uh, text me or, or message me and said, how do you get a start? Well, that's just one way to get a start. It's not the way, it's just one way. And yes, it may cost you more um, than $15 an hour just to do it, but you get, you get the knowledge, you get the understanding. Maybe this is not for someone that's uh, 45 years old with, with six kids and, and three cars. You know, this is probably best for a high school uh, a student or someone just graduated from college or things like that. I used to have a lot of uh, people in college. Um, uh, what I did is, is I went to the local college, a great college, by the way, um, Palomar uh, Community College. I love community colleges because they're right. The people who were in the computer uh, uh, classes there at Palomar, they were getting some good stuff. Uh, it wasn't, you know, a lot of theory and, and things like that and mushy mush and this type of studies and that type of studies. They just, they went in there and they studied Cisco, they studied whatever they needed to do. So what I would do is I would go to Palomar College and I would put a, uh, give them a sign and ask them to put it up. It says, you know, if you want a, an internship, uh, please give us a call. Now, I know some companies do internships. You show up and you get the coffee 
and you sweep the floor and you clean the toilet and stuff like that. And yeah, my interns did that too. But I paid my interns and uh, I paid them to work for me and I gave them the flexibility uh, to do school work. So if they needed to take off at two o'clock in the afternoon, they went. And if they needed a week off to prepare for finals or for a certification exam, I gave it to them. So I gave them flexibility, they gave me flexibility, and it worked really well for me. So if you're at college and you're a computer science person, um, you know, you may want to try this idea of learning cabling. Uh, because I don't see anyone actually, even in good colleges, teaching anything about uh, what they call uh, layer one um, technology. It's just not out there. And, um, you know, cabling and Ethernet cabling and LAN uh, cabling. Sometimes they have LAN design, but often it's not, um, it's not accurate. Uh, so anyway, make a long story short, did this for 28, no, 30 years now. And I keep on saying 28, but it's really 30. Um, my company has installed more than 6,000 systems throughout the United States, mostly cabling jobs and uh, voice and data networks. Um, I've hired over 200 uh, cablers uh, in those 30 years, and I've had some really great cablers and some people that really need to do something else in life. Um, but to make a long story short, I, I know what the industry is and I know what it will handle, and my advice to you is based on that experience. Uh, so if you just want to learn cabling, uh, then you know look at, uh, look at video one and, um, and learn some lessons there. But remember, that's just getting your foot in the door. So once you learn cabling, well then, you know, you can raise your prices later. Uh, and, um, you know, again, go into business for yourself. So let's see some other things here. Um, you know, it wasn't a lifetime job, I already discussed that. Uh, you know, when, when I first started in the industry, actually as a business, I worked uh, as a cabler uh, manager, supervisor, cabling businesses, for about two years, a year and a half before I started my own business. And then it took a couple of years even to start my own business. But once I started in business, uh, I, I realized that when what I did is I worked for people like Microsoft dealers. They did not like to do their own cabling. And so I, I, I liked cabling. I liked it a lot. They went quick. I enjoyed it. Um, and so I realized at first I would charge them per hour and I would charge the parts and all. And I realized that became difficult. Uh, for the um, Microsoft dealer because then he would have to have an estimate. Well, how long is it going to take you to get the job done? Because he has to, you have to sell it low enough to the Microsoft dealer or to the, you know, the, the Cisco dealer. I don't think there was a lot of Cisco dealers back then, but there were a lot of Microsoft dealers. You have to sell it to them at such a price that uh, they have to be able to mark it up and earn something from their customers. Uh, but you also had to give them predictability. So what I did is I would charge, are you ready for this? Uh, $35 parts and labor per drop. And uh, so they knew if they had 10 drops, even before talking to me, even before giving me the job, they knew what my rates were. I made it clear, made it absolutely transparent to them. I didn't tell them how um, difficult it was going to be and I need to look at the job and I need to charge them for a walkthrough to, to give them an estimate and all that other stuff. Just flat rate, $35 a drop, man. That's what I did. So if you're uh, a person that has experience already in cabling and you know how to cable but you know you want to start a business, maybe that's the way to start. Maybe not $35 an hour these days. Um, but, you know, um, figure out what the market will bear and what's reasonable and, uh, and ethical and then charge them that. And so a lot of times, you know, it, it would take me 10 minutes to put in a drop one place, but it would take me two hours to do somewhere else. Well, I can't explain that to the guy so he can give a quote to his customer. You know, the Microsoft person can give a quote to his Microsoft customer. Um, but, you know, what happened is I started getting more and more jobs uh, and uh, people started relying on me. And after I was in business for a while, uh, I could start raising my price per drop for uh, Microsoft partners. Now, today I would look at Cisco partners and some other people out there. But you got to have the experience first. And that's what, um, that's what uh, video one was about, was to make sure that you understand you have to know how to cable. And I would say that, uh, you know, uh, cabling, you got to cable probably... Uh, five to ten jobs just to get a really good understanding of how to get it done and how to get it done quick. 
uh, and professional because it's not just getting it done. If you're spending 10 hours on one drop, um, you're not going to get, you're, you're not going to be hired again uh, by that uh, company. Uh, and at the same time, um, you know, if you go in business for yourself as a cable or 10 hours for a drop, and I've seen that happen in the past, it's just not going to be profitable and you're going to lose a ton of money. So to make a long story short, get the experience, learn the shortcuts, learn the things you're supposed to do and how to do them and everything else, and uh, then go in business and uh, profit from being in business. But, you know, when you're subcontracting for a Microsoft dealer after you've learned how to cable or, or a Cisco dealer, uh, that's going to be different than end users. So I always charge more. I think I would charge the, the uh, Microsoft person, as I said, $35 a drop. And I would encourage them to charge their customer $55 a drop. But if I had a customer directly who called me, um, you know, to uh, do an install for them, I would charge them $55 a drop. So I had different rates. And the reason why is to get an end user to call you takes a lot of work. And it's more than just showing up with your parts and your tools and everything else and, and cabling. You got to go and spend time marketing and you got to sell to these people and all. Where my repeat business with Microsoft dealers, once I sold to them and they, they trusted me and they knew that it worked and I gave them that lifetime guarantee that if it breaks, I'll be back, no questions asked, and we'll fix it free immediately. Um, once they had trust in me as a cabler back then, then um, you know they uh, uh, were always just willing to call me back and, uh, and uh, use me over and over again. So I did not have to spend the marketing time um, and things like that. You know, one of the things they used to do too, if you're looking at how to get cabling jobs on your own, is I had a, um, a candy uh, dish, a little candy dish. And at the bottom of the candy dish, uh, I had a little sticker there. It said for um, Phillips of Jelly Bellies, call this number. And I would go into a, um, a receptionist who ran a, a business park where there'd be, you know, uh, you know, 25, 50 uh, suites there, and people were always moving in and out. And they always needed someone who could uh, put in a phone system or a cable for voice and data networks and things like that. So I would often get calls uh, from the receptionist. And I would make sure I go into the receptionist. I would leave the Jelly Bellies there. I didn't care if she ate them all, because she'd call me back, and it would develop a relationship uh, with this person. It's usually it was a she. Sometimes it was a guy. Um, but you know, I would stop in every once in a while as an excuse to put more jelly bellies in the uh, candy jar uh, at the re at the desk. The desk there, where you know the customers, their customers would come in to greet, you know, to set up a uh, you know to rent a suite. So I always got jobs that way, and I would charge fifty five dollars for those type of jobs in the past. And then once I got to the point where I just couldn't do all the work myself, I would hire people and I would train them, things like that. Now, we talked a little bit about college students and all and, and how I'd hire uh, college students, which gave me a lot of flexibility um, in, in my schedule if I had college students. And um, up until a year and a half ago, I was paying them $15 an hour. A lot of them, uh, a lot of people would come and say, uh, and I would say, well, I got everybody I need for the semester. And they would say, oh, please, just hire me anyway. Uh, you don't have to pay me anything. And, um, I, of course, I didn't do that, uh, even though I'd love to, uh, uh, you know, teach more people. But I had a business to run. I'm not there to teach. And, um, you know, when you hire someone for the first time, they don't know everything. It's costing you money to train them. So remember that when you're charging $15 an hour uh, for uh, someone, they're actually training you and giving you an opportunity and giving you a foot in the door. But I would have people, you know, people from college just come in and, and beg me um, just to take them on with no, um, you know, no pay at all. They'd just show up and do the work. And I never did that. I just didn't think it was fair. And since I didn't need them because I was paying other students uh, $15 an hour to come and do the work, it seemed pretty reasonable to me uh, not to use them. I did not want to rip them off. Um, but let's see. The next thing. Um, you know, some people argued about that, that said that they thought $15 an hour was too small and things like that, and who would work for that and things like that. Well, you know, you think about people who go to college, they pay to go to college. They don't get paid to go to college, they pay. And the time they put in, they don't get paid for that time. That's all future um, salary. 
So, you know, they get in, they get a degree with hopes that they get hired by a company who needs a, you know, Microsoft guy or, or a Cisco guy or somebody that knows computer science. So they're actually paying um, their own way to learn this stuff with the future hope that they're going to get a job. And their first job doesn't pay very well usually. Um, so uh, it's not going to be, it's going to be a couple of years before they're even going to be able to start to break even. So it's not unusual and it's nothing wrong with investing in yourself by, um, by uh, looking for these, these 1099 jobs that will help you get experience. And don't be fooled. Just because you did one or two jobs doesn't mean you know how to cable yet. It takes a while because you run into certain situations like how to breach a firewall, um, how to put cable in a ceiling that doesn't have a drop ceiling. So, you know, you have those type of issues. Now, some other ideas uh, besides cabling. And if you want to break into IT, here's some other ideas on how to break into IT. Um, a lot of people are really good at home entertainment stuff. I am not. I don't know the products. I don't know anything else. I do have a couple videos on there, but if you notice in those videos, I have a guy who's an expert on home entertainment, and uh, he does this for a living, and he does very, very well. So what he does is he drops uh, the cable down the, the wall just to uh, attach to the power and things like that. He puts the box in the wall, hangs the TV, hangs the speakers, the amplifiers, everything else. He's, he's really good with explaining about the remotes how the remotes work and everything else, and he does really well, uh, um, exceedingly well, uh, because he's an expert in his area. So if you're really good with this home entertainment stuff and gaming and stuff like that, maybe that's the field you should get into. There's a lot of business, a lot of homeowners uh, that want that type of work done in their house, and um, you know you might be able to go in and offer uh, to them uh, you know, your services and set them up, make recommendations and things like that. And usually the people that want that type of work done in their house, uh, they're very well situated. So, you know, the pay can be extremely profitable in that area. Uh, so that's, that's just one way. Now, there's one other thing, uh, and that is cabling homes, actually going in and putting the cable behind, you know, the drywall. And you got to be really know what you're doing uh, to be able to put in that. But there's a lot out there with smart homes. Uh, you know, they got the, you know, the the cameras outside that need to be cabled, things like that. But I would say if you're going to cable a house, you really have to know how to cable. That's a special uh, technique, so how to hide cable in in a house that's already uh, built with its drywall and all. So uh, if you're thinking of doing something like that, you really should be. Uh, way at the top of the cabling uh, food chain to understand how to do that. Now, I hired someone to put in uh, recess lights in uh, a house for me. And because I looked at it, I, look, let me tell you, I've been in construction my whole life, so I know how to do, uh, you know, 110 cabling and how to put recess lights in, but I decided to hire this guy. I liked the fact that he was only going to charge me uh, per uh, recess light. And so that sounded really reasonable. And I looked at where he was going to put the recess light in, and I thought, man, I don't know how he's going to get that 110 circuit there. How is he going to get the switch on the wall? Uh, how long is it going to take him and things like that? But I was comfortable because I was not paying him per hour uh, to figure this out. I was paying him per uh, drop light in a, an existing ceiling, which to me is just really hard stuff. Well, you know, that dude came in and he did like six of them in like 45 minutes. I couldn't believe it. I learned so much just by watching him on how to put in uh, recess lights. Now, do I do recess lights and sell people uh, that service? No, but it was. But I'm interested in it. And I, was, I really thought that was a great job for him. And he did a fantastic job. And I was very impressed. He was worth every penny. You know, sometimes people used to say to me, well, you know, you sent out a technician to fix my telephone system. He's only here for 10 minutes. I don't think I should have to pay the minimum of, you know, we, I think, charge a half hour. Um, and I would say, oh, I understand. I understand. I said, how about we do this? How about next time <laughs> I send out someone that doesn't know what they're doing and they could spend two hours there? And usually the customer would say, okay, I'll pay a half hour. No problem. I say, yeah, because that guy... 
they got out there and finished it in one or two minutes or five minutes. He was able to solve the problem and fix it. I say, he's been training for two or three years. He knows what he's doing. He's been to school. He's, he learns all these things. And so, um, you know, when this guy was able to pop in these recessed lights, you know, in a short period of time, that was, that was skill. That was craftsmanship. And he did a fantastic job, and it looked good when he was done. And I've used them a couple times in other areas of my house to put in the recessed lights. And uh, the house is like 30 years old, so... You know, he really knew what he was doing, and he did a great job according to code and everything else. So let's say you're interested in Microsoft, and uh, you want to eventually become a Microsoft partner. You want to start your own business, but you want to get in the industry because, you know, now you work for XYZ Microsoft partner, and uh, or you, you just grew up with Microsoft, and you're really good with software. Um, well, then... Uh, you know, one of the things I would suggest is that, you know, you study it and you get your certifications because certifications show to customers that you know what you're doing. Here's the manufacturer saying, yep, he put your, they put their seal of approval right on you. So if you have your MCSC or, or, you know, you know your Microsoft stuff. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, some people just have certs and they don't know what they're doing. So if you have uh, a love of uh, software and you want to get a job in software, well, then get your certs. But on top of that, volunteer. You know, if you have a church, volunteer to do their network for them and to maintain their network so you get the experience. Remember, they're actually paying you to get the experience. They may not actually be paying you any money, but, you know, they're, they're allowing you to fool around with their network uh, so you get the experience. In, and the way you get experience sometimes is by making mistakes. So, you know, volunteer, um, do different jobs like that until eventually you, you start to get known. You know, if you do nonprofits or you do your church uh, or your synagogue or, or whatever organization you belong to, um, you do that for free for a while. You know, what happens is people get to know that you do that work. And the businesses, business owners that attend that church or that organization will just turn around and say, well, you know, he worked for the church, he did a pretty good job. Maybe I'll hire him to work for me as a uh, contractor to, to uh, do Microsoft stuff. So there's a lot of things you can do in, in these areas, a lot of specialties in this area. It's not just cabling. Uh, but the idea is that usually when you start out, you don't make any money. <laughs> and sometimes it costs you money. Think, you know, think again about college. You're going to college to learn something new and you're paying to go to that college to learn something new. So think about it. It's gonna, you know, if you want to get in the industry and you want to be more than just an employee, um, and you want to work for yourself eventually, it's gonna cost money. Or if you want to be an employee and there's a lot of people out there to do cabling and you want to break into that field, well, that's the way you break in. You you got to pay to do sometimes uh, to get in there. And uh, you know, as a business owner, um, uh, there was at least one or two years in that thirty years that. I looked at my income that year and I did not make a dime. I lost money that year. So I woke up every morning, went to work. I didn't take vacation, things like that. Uh, but I did not make a dime that whole year. But it was an investment in myself to learn what I, what I needed to do. And it was also an investment in my business uh, that I would know I would recover a couple years later. So always think of these jobs that you're doing um, you know, the Microsoft, the, you know, you can do websites on your own if you want to do websites on your own and, and, and give some websites away to people so you can learn and they can learn, know about you. Um, and, uh, of course, the main thing is learning how to cable. Um, and it's going to cost. $15 an hour is not a lot when you're at 1099. You're absolutely right. I don't care what you charge, to be honest with you. Uh, some people made suggestions that you need to charge this or you need to charge that. You need to charge the minimum that gets you the job and then worry about making money, you know, six months from now or a year from now. Uh, this is your investment. This is your college education. You know, this is your uh, trade that you're learning. So, and then the second, last point is, of course, don't expect other people to pay for your education and your trade. It's something, if you're interested in doing it, you do it. And if you're not, don't, that's, that's fine. Uh, do something else uh, in life or nothing at all. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm being sarcastic. Um, the bottom line is that you got a lot of opportunities out there and you should take advantage of these opportunities. And it may cost you for a while. 
And uh, that's just part of life. If you want to learn, sometimes it costs you. Uh, sometimes it doesn't. If you work for a good company that's teaching you and they're giving you a, a really decent wage, fantastic. But if you can't get in the industry, that's how you do it. Thank you for watching today. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, please give me your comments. Um, uh, yes, I was a little snarky uh, today. I uh, apologize for that, but please give me your comments, positive, negative. I do appreciate it, and I just hope you have a great day. Bye.